So hi everyone. Uh, well, first, thank you for inviting me to give this talk on the um, the paper of the combined precipitation of uh, alum with the Kamen and sorry uh, with Kamen and Supercambial Conde. So uh, this is Zhou Jun, um, a PhD student at Tokyo University, and I've mostly been working on uh, experimental neutrino physics. Um, previously, I worked on uh, the Dabe reactor neutrino experiment, and now I'm working on the uh, super Kamen experiment. Um, and so, okay, let me begin with the um, pre-supernova alarm. Um, for a few decades, people in the uh, physics community and the uh, astro astronomy community have been um, preparing for the next observation of the galactic supernova. Um, and various of the, uh, I mean, early warning system have been developed using supernova neutrinos that come earlier than the photons of the explosion. Um, but uh, there is chance to notice the supernova even earlier than the supernova neutrino signal by using the pre-supernova neutrinos. So today I'm going to cover um, what uh, pre-supernova neutrinos are, the um, supercomet Kona detector and the Kalman detector. Um, the predicted signals in uh, these two detectors and the way we combine them. Finally, the online combined system. So moving on, um, neutrinos um, emitted are actually emitted from a star throughout its life. So then let's focus on a uh, star that can become a quantum collapse supernova, which is the, the, I mean, the purpose of the alarm system. So if you look at the plot on the right, which is the time sequence of a uh, for uh, neutrino signals of a, a progenitor. You see, um, before the uh, explosion, there is a, there are neutrinos emitted with increasing luminosity, and and those neutrinos are so called uh, pre supernova neutrinos. But if you compare the pre supernova neutrinos with the um, the, the supernova neutrinos uh, from the explosion, their luminosity is way smaller than that of the um, SN neutrinos, so therefore it's uh, <clears throat> it's more difficult to detect uh, the pre supernova neutrino signal. And for the current um, neutrino detectors, the detectability is uh, much limited to say roughly less than uh, a kiloparsec. And um, okay, so this is a, a plot of the uh, nearby um, core collapse supernova candidates. So um, there are actually several, um, I mean, a, a few um, main sequence stars that can become whole collapse supernova um, within, uh, I think, 600 uh, parsec. And though uh, many of them still have a long way to go. And then, um, so back to the alert system. Um, actually, uh, we built a combined pre supernova alert system, um, say combining the SK detector and the camera detector. And the purpose of these um, combined alert system is to provide early warning of a supernova um, to, the, to the observatories which can detect supernova neutrinos, including, um, of course, ourselves, like uh, SK and Kamen. Um, so this is actually a, an early warning of early warning. Um, but Camden has, has already uh, established a pre-supernova early warning system in 2016, and uh, SK did the same thing later in 2021. Um, we combined them such that the um, detection ability is improved, and the chance of uh, issuing a forest alarm is reduced, and also uh, the dead time is reduced. Um, all right, then uh, let me introduce the uh, Super Kamio Kande experiment, which is also called a like, Super K or SK for short. So, SK is an underground particle physics experiment. The detector is located in a mine called uh, Kamioka and in, in Japan under the mountain. Um, and it has an overburden of a thousand meter of rock which is 2,700 meter water equivalent. And the detector itself uh, contains 50 kiloton pure water within a uh, cylindrical tank of 
um, 41.4 meter height and um, 39.3 meter diameter. Um, and it is further separated into an inner detector for signal detection and an outer detector to shield background. And uh, the, the detection technique uh, is based on trunk of radiation. So when a, um, when a charged particle travels faster than light in water, it radiates light. And, uh, and these lights in turn uh, are captured by the uh, photomultiplier tubes equipped on the wall of the detector. Then we know there is a charged particle. So um, SK is, uh, is a generic uh, multipurpose detector. It has been used to detect um, say um, not only atmospheric neutrinos, solar neutrinos, accelerated neutrinos, and also um, been used to search for uh, rare nucleon decays. And of course, the, um, the thing we're going to discuss today, the pre-supernova neutrinos. Um, so then how does SK detect pre-supernova neutrinos? So um, pre-supernova neutrinos consist of all flavors of neutrinos and their energies are at uh, MeV scale. So SK detects pre-supernova neutrinos via inverse beta K um, because it has a large cross-section in this uh, energy region. And besides, um, its characteristic plum and delayed coincidence can help uh, reducing the background effectively. And so, you see uh, the plot in the bottom, um, uh, the positron, um, well, when a IBD uh, inverse beta decay happens and a positron is emitted, uh, which will quickly deposit energy and annihilate with an electron. So this is, these uh, energies are so-called so total energy, uh, sorry, uh, uh, prompt energy. Um, and then the neutron signal comes later. So it can be captured by a uh, nucleus emitting uh, gamma rays after say uh, hundreds of uh, microseconds. Um, and in 2020, so uh, SK detector was doped with uh, gadolinium to improve its capability um, to identify the uh, neutron capture signals. Um, since the, the cross section of neutron capture on gadolinium is way larger than that of, of the uh, uh, neutron capture on hydrogen or say oxygen. And so at this point, um, 2024, about 75% uh, of the neutron capture in SK happened on gadolinium. So uh, it brings a significant improvement on the um, uh, identifying uh, low energy events. Okay, so um, then the uh, uh, let's talk about the event selection in SK. So the characteristic prompt and delayed coincidence is uh, is used to select the uh, candidate events. Um, we apply selections um, so first based on the uh, say uh, relative distance and also the time difference of the the prompt delay pairs. And in addition, um, the boosted uh, decision trees are used, uh, taking into account the um, various uh, variables, say uh, the angular distribution of the uh, hits and the reconstructed energy and the, the quality of the reconstruction and also the, the uh, vertex of the events. So the plot uh, at the bottom um, is the uh, event selection efficiency as a function of the positron uh, true energy for uh, super K. Okay, so, and there are, of course, residual background events um, after the selection. So the major background sources are um, reactor neutrinos, um, geoneutrinos, um, radioactive decays, and accidental coincidence. And some of them are uh, irreducible background since they are true IBD events, and they are right at the same energy region. And finally, uh, a typical uh, background rates of SK after the uh, event selection is, uh, say, 12 events per day. 
All right, so moving on. Um, so I will introduce uh, the uh, Kamlin detector. Um, so the Kamlin detector, so Kamlin, uh, its so full name is uh, Kamioka uh, Liquid Scintillator Anti Neutrino Detector, uh, which is located in the uh, Kamioka mine. So uh, it's almost at uh, at the same place as SK. So actually, it's just like uh, I think a hundred meter away. Um, and so, as you can tell from the name, um, it uses uh, liquid scintillator as detection material. Um, a kiloton uh, liquid scintillator is contained in a large um, spherical balloon uh, with a radius of uh, 6.5 meter. And inside this large balloon, there is a smaller balloon containing uh, xenon loaded liquid scintillator, which is used for uh, neutrinoless double beta decay uh, search. Um, but this is not, uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to talk about this today. Um, okay, then the outer detector um, is contained in a cylindrical tank with 3.2 kiloton pure water. So differ from SK, uh, the Kamlin uh, detection technique is based on the uh, scintillation lines. Um, so it has a, a lower detection threshold compared to the uh, Cherenkov uh, detector. And it is also a multipurpose detector, um, which has been used to detect uh, reactor neutrinos, solar neutrinos, um, geo neutrinos, um, and uh, of course, the uh, pre supernova neutrinos we are talking about right now. Okay, then, um, so the uh, same as uh, Super K, Kamlin detects pre supernova neutrinos via the inverse beta decay. Um, but uh, the different thing is um, the event selection in Kamlin are all cut based. Um, so they, uh, they considered uh, the reconstructed energies of the uh, prom and the light signals, and also the uh, relative distance, and also the time difference between the, the prom and the light signals, and also uh, the vertex of the signals. So the plot uh, at the bottom shows the um, uh, event selection efficiency as a function of the uh, total prompt energy for Kamlin. Okay, so on the right, uh, I list the, the major background sources um, in Kamlin after the event selection. So we have uh, irreducible oh, sorry, uh, irreducible backgrounds, for example, uh, reactor neutrinos and geo neutrinos. And we also have some residual um, accidental coincidences. Um, and Kamlin uh, has, a, has a much lower background rate compared to SK. Uh, its typical background rate is about uh, 0.2 events per day. So then um, how do we actually search for a pre-supernova signal in uh, Kalman and SK um, and also the, the combined alert system. So um, the strategy is simple. We compare the observed event rate with the background rate uh, within a sliding time window. And then we, um, we search for the access of the event. So in, in the statistical terms, we, we are just uh, rejecting the background only hypothesis. Um, so, uh, strictly speaking, it's not a um, pre supernova uh, alert system. It's just uh, detecting anything that differs from the background rates. So, uh, I mean, that anything that access the, the background rates. So, then um, how long is the sliding window for uh, the detectors? So, uh, Kamlin uses a 24 hour time window. Um, and SK uses a shorter 12 hour time window because uh, we have some, uh, we usually have some, uh, say, calibration work or some test run. So it, it's shorter to reduce the impact of the, those works. Um, then uh, finally, how do we evaluate the background rates? Um, so uh, for both Canon and SK, we uh, measure the background rate. So we just we assume um, um, no signal appears in that period, and then we measure uh, the event rate and use use the 
consider them as background rates. So uh, SK measures the background rate over a period of 30 days, and Kamen does it for uh, with a 90-day window. And these uh, background rates are updated frequently um, to address the, um, say, potential change in the background um, sources, for example, the uh, reactor neutrino sources. And then um, we assume the background rate in the, in the sliding time window, say, um, are the same as the, the background rate measured in the, say, uh, long 30-day uh, or 90-day period. Okay, so um, I just mentioned uh, potential, potential change in the background rates. So actually, we have this concern because the, uh, the, reactor, um, the reactor status around uh, the Kamio Kamai, say in, in Japan, is not that uh, stable, I would say. Um, so, um, so one thing is the, the reactor neutrino background is uh, a reducible background. Um, it, it, they are true IBD events, and they, they are roughly at the same energy range. Um, and uh, due to the uh, great earthquake in 2011, uh, uh, all of the, basically all of the um, uh, nuclear detectors were shut down in Japan uh, at that moment, uh, at that time. But they were gradually uh, restarting since 2015. Um, and to today, um, some of them are still under reveal. We don't know if they are going to uh, restart today, tomorrow, or maybe in two years. So uh, these reactors oh, um, can significantly affect the background rate in Kamlin and uh, Super K. So then, um, so uh, in this analysis, so uh, actually we, we need to uh, consider, I mean, so to evaluate the sensitivity, uh, we considered uh, three different reactor background scenarios. Um, so the first one is the low reactor activity. Uh, we assume, say, all reactors in Japan are shut down. And the medium one is uh, relatively close to the, I mean, uh, the situation at this point. Um, so with uh, the, uh, say, uh, Mihama units and also uh, OE-3-4 units and also Takama-1234, these, uh, these fill um, reactors are operating with, uh, say, uh, 100% uh, power output. And um, we also considered the uh, high reactor activity, uh, which means all reactors in Japan are operating. So uh, these three scenarios are designed for the, um, uh, to evaluate the sensitivity. But uh, in terms of the um, alert system, um, we, well, we, we do not assume the background. Of course, we measured and updated background rates uh, frequently to address the potential change in the background rate. Okay, so then back to the um, background assumptions. Um, so uh, we show in this plot the uh, energy spectrum of uh, uh, reactor neutrinos, assuming these uh, three scenarios. So um, for the low reactor activity scenario, so the only contribution come from the Korean reactors. Um, and the, we see also the medium and high reactor activity scenario. So um, use, uh, okay, so let's use uh, Kamlinix as an example. Um, in the low reactor activity case, uh, Kamlin shall see roughly 0 0.07 events per day. Um, and the, for the medium case, uh, Kamlin is going to see like uh, 0.2 events per day. And for the high case, uh, Kamlin shall see 0.3 events per day. Okay, then um, moving on. So um, uh, with these, uh, uh, background assumptions. Um, 
and we we also calculate uh, the expected signal. Um, so this these plots show the expected signal in uh, super k and gamma as a function of time. Um, so for these uh, predictions, uh, we we are based on uh, two models. Uh, so one is from uh, Ozzy Waller. I hope I, I read his name uh, correctly. And the other is from uh, Kelly, who's the audience here today. Um, and we assume a um, uh, 15 uh, solar mass for denoder. And so uh, looking at these um, plots, you see that the SK and camera behave uh, differently with respect to the uh, to these two models because um, so uh, the run, one reason is that SK and Kalman are using different time window length. So uh, the, the integrated number of events, uh, I mean, uh, the time profile of the integrated event is different. And also um, the, they have different detection threshold. So it's not a simple scale up or scale down. Uh, you can now just uh, rescale the size of the detect detector. And um, and also, uh, we've noticed one thing that the, the low background rate of Kamen, um, it may actually help resolving the signal early. And, okay, so the next slide, um, so these plots are the uh, expected signals uh, at the last moment before the call collapse. So uh, the left one is for SK, uh, it's within a 12 hour time window at the last moment. And uh, the plot on the right is for Kamlin. Uh, so these numbers are integrated over 24 hours um, and at the last moment. So at long distances, um, so uh, if you look at the plot on the left, uh, well, although it may have no uh, statistical uh, significance, um, but SK may still see several candidates um, at the, uh, say, one kiloparsec, assuming the uh, normal uh, order rate, which is uh, good. Um, okay, so now we have the expected signal. Um, uh, it's a, uh, it's, well, uh, it's uh, usually uh, it's a common practice to say um, use the so-called um, maximum likelihood method uh, as I mean likelihood as a, a statistical I mean a test statistic and then uh, to convert this uh, maximum likelihood to a, a, a false positive rate um, yeah, using the p-value, um, but. Uh, Actually, we are um, a performing, a, say, hypothesis tests continuously, and we don't know when the signal is going to show up. So, in this sense, we 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 shall not do the same thing. I mean, uh, we shall not use the so-called uh, p-value, um, or say the the local p-value is wrong. But we shall use the so global p-value. Uh, this is the, the lookout effects. And um, so I made the, kind of the screenshot uh, taking um, uh, a paragraph from this uh, article. Um, so it says the significance calculation may take into account, must take into account the fact that an excess of event anywhere in the range could equally be considered as a signal. Okay, so um, to say, to address this uh, issue, uh, the lookouts where is that issue, um, we use the quantity uh, name uh, called uh, force up rate. Um, so force up rate um, is a, how to say, um, is a quantity that, um, uh, so uh, where are we? So uh, actually, instead of uh, calculating the uh, the p-value of the test, we use um, the likelihood ratio uh, as an intermediate statistic. 
Um, so we use it to rank the extremeness, I'll say the loudness of the uh, of an observation, and then uh, so in in this ranking, a larger uh, like a ratio corresponds to a uh, larger uh, excursion of the background rates, and then uh, we we use uh, toy Monte Carlo simulation to. Uh, try uh, to extract this uh, for some rates. So we first perform Tom Monte Carlo simulation with random uh, background events. And then uh, the four sum rates for an observation uh, is calculated by, say, it, it is a frequency that we find uh, a higher likelihood ratio from the toy multi color than the one in question. So this uh, frequency, um, uh, by considering the uh, galactic color collapse supernova may happen once in several decades. We, uh, we set the ultimate alert uh, threshold to force up rate to be uh, less than one in a century. Okay, then, um, so now we have the uh, alarm threshold. Um, and in this slide, I'm showing the, the expected warning time for the uh, individual detectors. So the plot on the left is the expected warning time. Um, so, I mean, uh, the plot on the left is the, the, the uh, detection significance as the as a function of time for SK, and the plot on the right is for Kamlin. Um, and the assumptions here are um, uh, 15 solar mass per juniper at 150 parsec. And we have plots, uh, say, for two models, and also the uh, for uh, normal mass ordering and inverted mass ordering. And uh, the background rate is. Um, taken from the medium case, which is close to the situation at this point. So um, the expected warning time is defined as the uh, residual time at the point we, we reach um, force a uh, rate of one in a century. And please note that the significance here is uh, just a result of the intermediate statistic like ratio. It, it doesn't have the usual meaning of say uh, three sigma or five sigma. So uh, we are actually looking at this this line. If you can, uh, if you can see my arrow. Um, so yeah, for some rate of uh, one in a century, that's the alarm threshold. Um, and uh, the latency due to data processing uh, has not been taken uh, into account in, in this plot. Um, so we say the, let's see, uh, the typical latency for SK is about six minutes, and it's uh, it's less than 20 minutes for Kamlin. And um, so the other plots um, showing the, so this is the uh, expected um, warning time as a function of distance. So um, uh, in these plots, all the three background scenarios are simulated. Um, so you can see there, there's a band around a, uh, a line. So for the low background scenario, um, it corresponds to the uh, upper edge of the band. And for the high reactor activity scenario, it corresponds to the uh, lower edge of the band. And the medium case is the, the line in the middle. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, the, the definition of the warning time. And so uh, we have uh, made the plot, uh, the warning time as a function of distance. Um, so, okay, so the, uh, but, Okay, please note that for these uh, two plots, the x-axis uh, have different scales. So for SK, um, we have a detectability. Um, I mean, for the best case, we may 
issue an alarm for uh, a progenitor even at like 500 parsec. Um, for for Canon, it's uh, roughly uh, 290 or 80 parsec. So, um, okay, so just a quick summary of the uh, sensitivities of these uh, two detectors individually. Um, uh, so we list uh, all of the, say, uh, the, all the scenarios we simulated in this table. Um, so for uh, for Canon, we have a few um, scenarios that, I mean, uh, Canon cannot issue uh, um, an alert um, at the, say, for some rate of one uh, in a century. So, uh, which are uh, mostly the uh, inverted uh, mass ordering and with a uh, high reactor activity. Um, but for SK, um, uh, it turns out it's uh, much better, but uh, we, so say for the inverted ordering, we have at least um, one, roughly what, two hours to, uh, for preparation. Okay, so then um, moving on, um, we uh, are combining the SK and Camden. So what we do is we, we use the, uh, what we do is a simple um, combination. We use a profile likelihood ratio um, as an intermediate uh, statistic as mentioned before, uh, and this is in turn used to rank the uh, the extremeness of the observations and then uh, the uh, full sound rate is extracted. Um, and the likelihood of this, uh, the likelihood function is uh, just a product of the Poisson likelihoods of Kamen and SK. So we just uh, multiply them together. Uh, we consider them independent experiments. Um, so you may you may consider well uh, the preserved novum neutrinos are arrive on Earth and I mean so it should be correlated in both detectors but uh, in this um, in this search we are just searching for an access over I mean above the background rate we we are not say uh, assuming any uh, model uh, explicit model so. It's a, a hypothesis test to reject the background only scenario. So um, yeah, we treat the SK and Kamen as independent experiments, and also the background rates are considered uncorrelated, as both experiments perform uh, their independent background measurements. So um, then uh, moving on. So this is the. Uh, the plot on the right is the combined uh, uh, significance as a function of uh, time. So again, I want to say the significance here is uh, means, well, just a rank of the extremeness of the observations. Not, um, it does not have has the usual meaning. So what we care about is whether it uh, goes above uh, for some rate of one in a century. So um, Camden, uh, the plot is on the top left. It can resolve a uh, signal. Uh, well, um, well, maybe not in this, uh, not at this threshold, but uh, actually for the uh, oscillatory model with uh, normal ordering, we we can see some uh, something uh, at the early stage, but it, it's. Not just not going above the uh, force on rate of one in a century. Um, okay, so the lower background of Camden helps us uh, in uh, resolving a small signal, but and uh, in SK, SK has a large size, and so it can uh, increase the significance at the say uh, last a few hours before the explosion very rapidly. And taking these advantages of the these both detectors, we have the um, uh, combined uh, is 
one in time here. So assuming um, the stars with uh, 15 solar mass at 150 parsec, we can claim a uh, significant pre supernova signal with this threshold. Um, so roughly eight hours before the supernova for all the models with the normal ordering. So uh, the least is the thing, the red line here. Um, oh, yeah. And, and for the uh, inverted ordering, it should be at least two hours before the supernova. Okay, so then moving on, um, this shows the combined uh, uh, detection distance. Um, so for the, uh, if you look at the plot on the top left, um, so Kalman uh, can earn a long preparation time if the, the star is really close enough, um, say up to 20 hours or, um, yeah. But uh, SK has a large size uh, that helps it bridge fast. And then um, the combined alarm, uh, again, taking the advantage of these uh, two detectors, we can, oh, so this is wrong, I'm sorry. Um, so we can extend our uh, detect, uh, detectability a little bit. Um, if you look at the blue line, it's uh, actually for the best case, we can uh, even go to like uh, 550 um, the parsec. So then um, again, a summary of the uh, combined sensitivity. Um, so uh, if you look at the, the bottom column, um, so for uh, basically for every uh, scenario we simulated, we have a um, how to say, extended uh, warning time, which is great. And also for uh, assuming 15 solar mass progenitor at this distance, um, for every scenario we simulate, even with the uh, say high reactors activity, we can issue alarms, which is um, very uh, say promising. I'd say. So then uh, finally, I am going to introduce the uh, online alert uh, system. Um, so uh, the actually the online combined alert system is based on the, the two uh, individual alert systems. So uh, Kanban has its own DAQ, of course. Uh, so, and after the uh, DAQ system and the uh, data processing, it's passed to the pre-supernova alert system. Uh, there we accumulate um, the number of events within the uh, sliding time window. And then uh, we exchange the, the detector status, the time uh, stamp of the data uh, acquired, and also the uh, number of candidates uh, within the time window at this moment, and also uh, the number of background uh, measured. So then uh, these uh, are these numbers are exchange exchange uh, every five minutes. Um, we use the status code to determine whether data are valid, valid or not. And also we check the timestamp to avoid uh, like very um, out of date uh, event, uh, I, mean, I mean the uh, data exchange. And so this is a, a data on, uh, sorry, rate only analysis. Um, and we uh, export uh, the false alarm rates as a result to the uh, registered users. And once a, um, a signal with force alarm rate less than one in a century is detected, we're going to send an email to the GCN circular. Um, so uh, the, the system is online and registration is open now. Uh, well, actually I'd say it's, uh, it started in May, 2023. Um, and what users can get from us is the um, the results, of course, the false alarm rates um, uh, of this uh, search at this moment, and also the timestamp of these uh, data and the status code. Uh, so these two are for sanity check. Um, and 
the status of the combined alert system, uh, well, it's uh, kind of embarrassing because for the moment, Scanlon has stopped DAQ for a uh, for an upgrade that that will last for several years, um, and so it's SK alone uh, for several years. Um, and at this point, SK is also uh, temporarily off for some uh, work. So, uh, but we plan to resume at uh, mid. October. Okay, so so far, um, uh, after operating for uh, more than one year, we never found any uh, preserved pre a signal, nor uh, false alarm has been issued. Um, okay, so then finally, uh, the conclusion. Uh, I think I am slightly over time, and. Uh, Okay, uh, in any case, I'll read them. So uh, it uh, combined along, um, we take advantage of the low background in Kamen and the large size of SK. And uh, with these, we can issue early warning in every scenario we simulated, assuming a 15 solar mass star at 150 parsec. Um, and the warning time is at least two hours before the explosion, so which is way longer than the uh, latency due to data processing. Um, and uh, we have also the uh, pre supernova uh, detectability um, up to 510 parsec, uh, assuming the background rate at this point. Um, so yeah, again, this is an advertisement uh, the alarm system is online and registration is open. So that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you very much for this interesting seminar. Uh, so it's time for questions now. So I see uh, Alec uh, has the hand up. Uh, yeah, thanks for the. Thanks for the nice, nice explanation of how it works. So in, in October, when when Super K comes back, Camlin will still be down for a while. Uh, will this exactly combine the combined machinery still work? It'll just be the one experiment uh, probability. Um, so the framework is still there. We are uh, we will continue exporting uh, results, but the it will be uh, Camlin only results. Oh, sorry, uh, SK only result. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, okay. but we are like uh, discussing um, how how shall we continue the uh, this framework. So, yeah, please uh, next. Yeah, Eric. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, very nice uh, work all together. Um, can I ask if your pre supernova alert system interacts in any way with the main supernova alert? And for example, would you consider after n number of hours after your pre supernova alert to issue a cancellation or retraction of the alert based on the fact that you've you've not detected, uh, let's say, the main burst after I don't know. 10 hours or something. And um, in ingesting those alerts from the low BG uh, system for the purpose of using that uh, within uh, uh, the gravitational wave network and setting up procedures, if you wish, whenever there is a pre supernova alert on what to do uh, with, uh, with our instruments. And um, you actually answered uh, uh, the, the the fact that uh, um, we, I was seeing Super K being down recently, uh, quite uh, quite quite often up and down. So maybe this is connected with what uh, um, you're uh, describing here. But all in all, is there any way at any given moment for me to find out if Camland or Super K is up and running or off? either um, uh, for maintenance or for, for upgrades. And finally, you mentioned that you're connected to GCN, although I never recall seeing any GCN 
alerts. Well, you may tell me that maybe there was nothing, of course, nothing uh, was generated over the last uh, year or so. So can you confirm whether you're plugged into GCN and whether the next pre-supernova alert is going to come through GCN? Thank you. Um, so it's, uh, I'll say it's not like a uh, link to the GCN itself. It's just uh, will send um, an email while, via the uh, GCN circular. Um, so currently we don't have plan to, um, to adjust uh, this strategy. Um, and I, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of over my level to, you know, discuss this, uh, kind of decision. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I, I might not uh, answer your question properly. Um, that's fine. Mean, I, I guess I, I understand that you're going to be using, you know, uh, human written, written and ingested, uh, circulars, but you're not going to be issuing uh, notices. I see. Okay. Okay. Thanks. But, uh, uh, Jim? Uh, yes, I have a question about this particular slide. You say that the users um, can decide the wrong threshold for the false alarm lead. So they can, but but there is a minimum. Is Do I understand correctly? There's a minimum to this. You, um, A user can accept, you know, not once per century, but once per thousand years, but they can't go below once per century. You can't have 10 per century. Yeah, we, we, we do have a minimum, but that's, uh, I would say that's below one in a century. Um, but it would be like zero point something in a century. Um, uh, I, 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 I want, what's, what's the maximum? How, um, what's an, oh yeah. What, what's the maximum? Um, so actually, uh, I, I can't really tell what's the maximum because the, the way we calculate the uh, force alarm rate is so we first um, uh, do some, say, make some toy uh, multicolored, uh, say, background only uh, events. And we do it for like, uh, we simulate for uh, 1 million years and then try to extract the. Um, uh, for some ray from the um, Monte Carlo. Um, and I guess the minimum is the, uh, the, the amount of time we, we do the test. Sorry, the maximum, the maximum is the, the amount of, uh, background trial or say the, how, how many times we do the test, uh, we do the Monte Carlo test. Um, so in that sense, it would be a huge number. Okay, I'm. I'm. What I'm thinking is like, imagine I I have a my own neutrino detector, and um, I've got a below threshold signal for pre supernova neutrinos. Um, but if I combine that with super K and Kamland, suddenly um, the significance of the of the signal um, will be uh, gross. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering whether how how it would be possible to to extend the pre supernova neutrino system by and and include other other detectors. Uh, sorry, uh, to expand to expand what? Uh... To expand the system, um, can we start combining signals that include Dune, Ice Cube, um, and every other um, neutrino detector out there? Uh, yes, I think so. So the, uh, as I showed here, um, the flame work, it's, it requires, I mean, the input, it requires us only the, uh, um, number of candidates within a time window and also the, the say, uh, expected background rates. And we can do the same thing. I mean, just extend from two, uh, experiment to three experiment. We, we had, I mean, the now for currently we have a two dimensional force up rate table, and then we just extend it to uh, three dimensional, four dimensional. I mean, in principle, it can be done, and we 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 say uh, we do have uh, 
such discussions to include other uh, experiments. So would you provide the data to do that would allow someone else to do the analysis? The data, yes. Um, uh, as I show here, for every registered users, um, if you uh, register via this uh, this website, uh, then you can um, okay. And of course, uh, if you agree uh, the the policy, then you can use the data. Um, we have another question from Andre. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for uh, for a nice talk. I have actually several questions. Uh, so first of all, you say that you're doing the uh, Toy Monte Carlo to calculate uh, false alarm rate. Uh, uh, why, uh, why why do you need uh, Toy Monte Carlo here? Uh, if I understand correctly, you're having uh, just a Poisson counting experiment and you have the background rate. Uh, so everything should be calculated uh, analytically by formulas, no? Uh, why are formulas? I, I mean, uh, you 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 measure some number of uh, of candidates within your time window, yes. and you expect some background uh, rate uh, within the same time window. It's uh, uh, why why do you need uh, Toy Monte Carlo to estimate the likelihood? I well, uh, there might be an analytical formula. But it, it might just be something I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, what came to my mind was uh, the uh, tone of the color. It's uh, straightforward, um, and I don't think it it's worse than the analytical calculation. But uh, no. Andre, maybe uh, I think you are fully right that the, for the false alarm rate, it's only uh, dependent on the background rate, and this comes from measurements. You don't need any uh, Toy Monte Carlo. Um, but when you want to convert this false alarm rate um, into the probability of uh, uh, triggering this pre-supernova signal for a given model as a function of the distance to the source, then you need the Toy Monte Carlo of this model at this distance. Um, so for mm. the signal, we, we haven't detected any pre-supernova signal, so you need, you don't have the day, you need the, the, the Monte Carlo to predict how much uh, you would expect uh, and convert this, this false alarm rate into, yeah. Um, no, excuse me, F F false alarm layer, uh, rate depends only on your background oh, hypothesis. Oh, only on right? the background, indeed. Yes. Yeah. So you, you, do, you don't need to do it for, for your signal uh, model. Not but, for the false alarm mm -hmm. rate, but then when you want to give results, uh, this model I can trigger the signal up to this distance. Then you need the Monte Carlo. Ah, okay. So, so this is for uh, efficiency calculation. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, okay. So then, uh, does it mean that uh, for, uh, this uh, Toy Monte Carlo you uh, you're doing on it only for uh, for for this uh, paper and for for producing the plots? Or, or is is it uh, being done uh, comp uh, repeatedly in your real time system? It's been used in the uh, real time system. So you you uh, 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 make this Toy Monte Carlo uh, from time to time. Yes, exactly. Yes. Whenever we update the background. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, and. Uh, so another question, uh, as a main source of uh, background, you have uh, nuclear reactors and uh, yes. they uh, can not only be uh, in this uh, state where some of them are switched on or switched off, but they can uh, also lead to some variation in time uh, of, of your background. Yes. Uh, which can... Uh, Probably mimic uh, the uh, the pre supernova signal. Yes. Uh, how do you how do you plan to handle this? So um, we have uh, I think we have two uh, two means. So first we uh, update background uh, rates. 
so we, we measure background uh, frequently. Um, um, and the second thing we do is uh, that we have a, uh, I'm not sure if it's internal, uh, but we, we, we have a kind of a, a monitor, say, to, to check the, um, the electric, uh, electric power of the uh, reactor. Um, yeah, to, to check the rea uh, electric power of the reactors around this uh, experimental site. Mm -hmm. So you're uh, basically you're you're monitoring the nearest reactors, and uh, uh, yes. take taken into account. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and uh, so one more uh, like a, a, a comment. Uh, so in uh, 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 in our paper from. Uh, uh 2021 we we uh, considered uh, the uh, uh taking into account the uh, uh the time distribution of uh, of the of the events so you you're doing this uh, counting analysis uh, like having uh, uh, uh you're doing analysis ba ba based on just number of uh, events within yes. your uh, time window, um, but uh, since the number of events, the events rate from uh, uh, pre supernova should be constantly uh, gr gradually increasing. Uh, taking into account this uh, time distribution can uh, significantly increase uh, your uh, sensitivity. Yes, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, we we notice that, and uh, we are kind of uh, developing a time profile method. Um, but uh, yeah, that that's still um, uh, not ready yet. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you for the point. Yeah. yeah, I can send the uh, pa uh, the, the 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 paper. The chat. Oh, great, great, thank you. We had some estimations for uh, for Camland and uh, Super K, but of course it's like an external estimation, and uh, it was uh, not not very precise. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's precious uh, evaluation. I, yeah, thank you. Are there any comments or questions, uh, Meli? Let me one uh, related to the last issue. So, whether from Monte Carlo or from analytical methods, when you calculate a false alarm rate, uh, did you compare that with archival data, or um, did you run this algorithm on the archival data, and does it ever trigger? Uh, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by archival data. Like with the existing data, uh, is it as stable? The background is as uh, is it as stable as you expect, or would there be any I don't know other kind of fluctuations that might ah uh, no we we have uh, no we have never compared that so okay yeah it could be interesting to see if I apply the same thing on on real data and. Mm. Thank you so much. So I think uh, that's it. Um, many thanks for the interesting seminar.